Great. Thank you so much, Sam. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining Bug Crowd's Level Up Virtual Security Conference. I'm actually coming to you from a parking lot in Davis, California, next to a soccer field where my daughter will be playing shortly. So hopefully the audio is good. Sam, please uh, let me know if something doesn't come through. You know, it has taken me about one and a half years to get invited to this fantastic event. So I was not going to give up this uh, opportunity. Thank you, Sam, for inviting me. I'm honored to be presenting here at Level Up. Uh, during these last uh, 1.5 years uh, uh, here at Bug Crowd, you know, they've been filled with a ton of learning, a ton of growth, and an admiration for everything our researchers do to secure our connected world. During this time also, I've been very humbled by the sheer creativity of our researchers, which is why Level Up is such a fantastic event because we get to share that. Uh, the mind-blowing bugs that we have uh, submitted to our customers, obviously, are very, very important. And also the massive socioeconomic impact we are having by making it possible for our researchers to, researchers to contribute to the safety of the internet from anywhere in the world. Uh, in fact, just two months ago, I received a message from one of our younger researchers uh, in India who had... Uh, been so excited about the fact that he bought his mom a car with the bounties he earned on our platform. And for him, it was a way to thank her because she sacrificed everything to help him study. And that was just a real touching moment for me. And then uh, just parlayed with hundreds of other stories that I've heard from a lot of our bug crowders. In fact, one where I was uh, traveling in Iceland for a family trip and was stopped by someone who told me, he had just met someone at a youth hostel who had funded his entire vacation to Iceland with bounties he earned on the Bug Crowd platform. And this was largely because he saw me wearing a Bug Crowd swag. By, by the way, we, I think, make some of the best swag in the industry. And uh, the creativity of that swag and the importance of that swag is really important. Because even in this situation where someone saw me wearing that swag and told me this wonderful story, just reminded me about how blessed we are at Bug Crowd because every day we get to see the benefits of unlocking the potential of humans all around the world to provide incredible impact that makes our world safer. You see, I have three kids, three months into joining a Bug Crowd, I found myself moving to all the products that we protect and our researchers protect for our customers. And some of these names that you'll know and others that I can't really mention, uh, whether it be Arlo, Eero, SmartThings, Netgear, whether it be thermostat, streaming media services, banking services, telephony, conferencing, even retail websites uh, are all protected by our researchers. And it just gives me this uh, sense of uh, safety because our community is there to secure our connected digital world. Luckily, when I was growing up in India, I had that very same feeling of safety within the community that we had when I was growing up. We didn't have as much of compute environments. Uh, I am a little bit older. And coming to America for college was a big change. And I remember as I was leaving uh, for America, my parents said, be part of your new community and contribute regardless of what the job is because the community will embrace you for your contributions. And that's exactly why I think that what Sam and Jason do here to educate the community and share the wonderful things that each other, uh, with each other so that we can learn from each other allows us to become such a vibrant and such an important force in ensuring the security of the internet. During college, I had a chance to work on an incredible product, product, project to predict avalanches. And, you know, just being a database engineer, my job as an intern was to write databases that could track the movement of snow in these mountains and use this data to calculate where that mass and the kinetic energy of the snow was so that we could predict when an avalanche would hit and take care of that problem before a natural disaster happened. From an engineering perspective, this was an incredible idea. But to my surprise, the impact to the community was even more incredible 
than just the engineering idea, which, by the way, I loved a lot. All of a sudden, what I found was that people felt comfortable to do things in the mountains without fearing that they would be caught in a natural disaster. In some cases, it even unlocked four to five months of people's time during the winter where the local villagers were able to now go out and do things in the mountains, whether it be preparing for the summer times to build farms or even having smaller projects that allowed them to enjoy the mountains while ensuring their economic and personal safety. These kinds of community activities, uh, you know, early on in my career really allowed me to get a sense for how we can, as humans, work with each other to make everything so much more better. And this is what I'm excited about and excited with what we do here at Bud Crowd, because we also unlock this incredible creativity of our researchers to find vulnerabilities that make our digital world safer. Uh, several of the folks here online already know that I'm a huge fan of Simon Sinek. And Simon Sinek is uh, one of those motivational talkers that talks about uh, a finite and an infinite game. And what he means by a finite and an infinite game allows him to then determine how he or his uh, uh, community should be playing that game. So if you think about the definition of finite game, uh, according to Simon, the big thing is that a finite game has known players with fixed rules that guide the players to an objective to end the game or win the game, whether it is by winning or losing or just with time running out. So soccer, baseball, cricket, in most cases, are good examples of finite games where the rules are known there's a set number of players and you know the objective at the end of the game. On the other hand, infinite games, on the other hand, are where both known and unknown players are being introduced into the mix. Rules are always changing and the objective of all players is to perpetuate this game. Hopefully this sounds familiar to all of us that are in the cybersecurity world where we constantly see new players coming in. We constantly see rules changing. We constantly see attack surface changing. And the whole idea is how do we make our digital connected world that much more safer? So security is clearly an infinite game in my view. I'd love to hear from you on that as well. But what happens when you play an infinite or a finite game is very important. And how you play it is very important. You see, when a finite player comes up against another finite player, the system is very balanced. Two soccer teams know how to play with, against each other. They know the rules of the game. They know the time that it will take. And with this awareness, they do what is needed to win, lose, or draw the game. When an infinite player comes up against an infinite player, the system is also pretty stable. You know, just think about how Iceland, a small little island, in uh, uh, the Arctic Circle or near the Arctic Circle has made itself energy sufficient by investing in the right kind of human creativity ideas, whether it be geothermal or looking at how they can manage the way lava flows to make themselves that much more self-sufficient and safe. The challenge really comes is when you put a finite player against an infinite player. And this creates a system that is imbalanced. The beauty of crowdsource security, in my mind, is that it creates an infinite resource of skilled and trusted researchers that help customers play this infinite game. By fostering our community of researchers, we can collectively provide tremendous value to our customers. This is the reason we will continue to invest in Level Up and Bug Crowd University. This is also the reason we invest in initiatives like Disclose IO that helps provide safe harbor to both researchers and customers and continue to work with our customers to provide interesting attack surfaces to our researchers. Luckily, I've had the opportunity to work on a variety of transformational technologies that brought human creativity to make finite use cases have infinite potential. Bug Crowd and Casey's idea is clearly one of those 
absolute technology transformation that allows us to bring the right human creativity to the use case for our customers and absolutely is a personal favorite for myself. Another personal favorite was a project I did in India to put solar powered milk dairies in villages. Going back about 30 years in India, we produced more milk than we consumed, but the finite infrastructure in those days combined with hot temperatures created a finite distribution system, which resulted in milk not getting to the places where it was not produced because it got spoiled on the way or it just didn't, we didn't have the way to get that transported over to the places where you needed the milk. Our project, funded by the Indian government and a Danish joint venture, used solar energy to refrigerate this milk. It was a really cool idea, which used ammonia as a catalyst to use solar power to create a catalytic chemical reaction that allowed hot water to be cooled down to zero degrees centigrade. This allowed us to uh, cool down as much as 15,000 liters of milk a week to get it down to a pasteurization temperature so that we could transport this 100 to, two, to 200 kilometers to the nearest milk processing hub. These so solar refrigerators essentially have opened up the tremendous opportunity for our villagers who can now sell the milk to the solar refrigeration cooperative and enable us to bring milk to areas, mostly urban cities, in a sufficient and safe manner. You see, we unlocked a tremendously infinite resource that was gated by a very finite infrastructure. I distinctly remember two faces from the time that I did this project. Again, it was 30 years ago, but the, the view is absolutely clear to me. The picture is absolutely clear. First was a farmer's child who got his first toy that we purchased with the money that the milk cooperative had made. And the second was a child in the city when we gave her her first glass of cold milk that had traveled over 200 kilometers without spoiling and was just so refreshing to her and so important to her health. Fast forwarding 30 years now, we do this every day at Bug Crowd by bringing the right resources to the right use cases for customers, we unlock that creativity of our security researchers that help our customers play this infinite game of security. Just last weekend, I was watching my daughter's soccer game and another father who plays on the same team, whose daughter plays on the same team and is also a customer <coughs> of Bug Crowd, said to me, do you know that we have had an interesting month with our bug crowd program. And as you might imagine, this can go two ways. It's either, oh my gosh, what was just delivered or just sheer delight. And as is mostly the case with our customers, which is incredible to me, it was sheer delight. He then proceeded to tell me that many of his engineers were coming to his office and telling him about the vulnerabilities that were submitted by our researchers at an, at an alarming rate. My friend was so astonished by his engineer's response who kept telling him about each bug regardless of severity that they were delighted to get from their bug trap program. And in fact, the way they were addressing each one of these bugs was to fix, first validate and then fix these, but more importantly, use that fix as a badge of honor within the company. Stories like, stories like this keep us going. Impact like this motivates us to invest further in, in events like Level Up and Bug Crowd University so that each and every one of our researchers can get the resources they need to be players in this infinite game of security. I'd like to thank each of the presenters and contributors who have prepared some amazing content for this Level Up conference and thank each of the participants who are taking the time to be part of Level Up. I would also like to thank Sam Houston, who has worked tirelessly with others at Bug Crowd with the likes of Jason Haddix, Casey, our ASCs, and the entire team that has pulled together this conference. Please enjoy the next few days, learn a lot, and unlock your potential. Back to you, Sam. 
Thank you so much, Ashish. I really appreciate that. Um, let's see. Since we've got a couple minutes, I guess. Um, do you want to take any questions that we might have? If we have any sure. questions that come in, let's see. Um, again, we're on about a 10, 20 second delay, um, but um, I'm going to ask in the chat if anyone has a quick question for you. Sam, I just got one on tweet. Can I just hit sure. that one up from Abartan? Sure. Uh, this morning, I got a question saying, how is it to work at Bug Crowd? And I can just tell you that it is the best job I've ever had. Outside of the ability to have this impact that we as a company have, it's amazing to feel part of a team that is aligned together to help the one mission, make the world a safer place, the digitally connected world a safer place. And then to see the passion of our researchers, Abart and your, you yourself, to come in and enable us deliver on this mission. So thank you so much for that. And we just enjoy every day of it. I personally enjoy the camaraderie that we've built and the community that we have. Sam, any other ones that you might have? Um, let's see. Um... They, have, they have one, Ashish. They want to know when you're coming to <laughs> India for NOLCON. <laughs> you, you are so one I would... <laughs> So I would love to come to Nalcon and hopefully next year, uh, Jason allows me to come in there and have a chance to speak with everybody. Uh, you know, being from India, it's, uh, it's just uh, incredibly precious to me to see such an incredible conference. I do track uh, uh, the conference uh, during when it is going on uh, to a certain degree with a lot of jealousness because I would love to be in Goa at the same time. But hopefully next year, uh, I get to be part of the conference and look forward to meeting everybody there at Nalcon. Very cool. Um, so there's a couple of questions here related around getting started on, on Bug Crowd um, for people who have kind of never been a part of the community before. So um, we have a resource, if you scroll up in the chat, called Bug Crowd University, and it's a page on our website. And it's a whole bunch of content. Um, that uh, that everyone has put together, right? It's an open source initiative. Um, I kicked it off with about five modules or six modules, JP on our engineering team, Sam helped produce it all. Um, and it's got some introduction to how to use, first of all, the Bug Crowd platform, and then how to submit a good submission. And then we go into technical topics like XSS and stuff like that. And then you can also find on that page um, all of the previous level up videos as well. So everybody who has their domain knowledge and tips and tricks and, and all the presentations from all the community end up on the Bug Crowd University page. Um, so it's both uh, on the link that I put up in the chat. Um, you could just Google Bug Crowd University and you'll get to the landing page yeah. um, or uh, it'll also take you to the GitHub link, which is where people can submit. And there's uh, for the content modules that Bug Crowd creates, there's also lab guides where we tell you to take specific labs to get kind of a good exposure to the topics and, and things like that. So we had a good question come in from um, Stoke and um, Ashisha. Stoke is a researcher out of mm -hmm. um, the Netherlands, right? I believe. And he's a really great video producer, uh, really creative guy. So he asked a good question for the CEO, which was, where do you see this thing in five years from now? Where is, where is Bug Crowd um, headed? Yeah, it's a great question. So I'll just come back to the core that uh, we feel uh, is important to enable us to drive the future for Bug Crowd. So at the core of Bug Crowd, we have uh, built an engine that allows us to bring the right resource with the right human creativity to the right use case. And this opens up a tremendous amount of opportunities for us as a community because in essence, there's a tremendously large demand for experts all around the world to enable them to, uh, to enable them to deliver security solutions, whatever they might be. 
Today we have bug bounties and VDP, and we just recently announced next-gen pen test. And it's absolutely the trajectory that we're going to continue down the path because the number of use cases that customers have continue to increase because the world is only getting more digitally connected. And to that end, we as a community need to help our customers deliver on those use cases. And that's where our investments will be going. Awesome. Well, unfortunately, I think we're just about out of time. Um, we got some um, good questions. So I think we've gotten some good feedback here that we should probably, uh, we'll find a way to do something like this again with you, Ashish. It looks like people enjoyed it. love it. And um, yeah, thank you so much. If you're in the YouTube chat right now on, on live, please give a virtual round of applause to Ashish. Or if you're on Twitter, you can um, follow him at twitter.com slash Gupta. And if you tweet us out, um, use hashtag it takes a crowd. But thank you so much to Bug Crowd CEO Ashish Gupta for joining us today. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Ashish. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Jason. Have a great conference. Thank you, sir. You have a good day.